What's going on everybody C4 welcome back to the channel today we're here for a new episode of our retro rebuilds where we start in Madden 12 we go a full decade 10 years to current day Madden 22 and we try to build a dynasty it is our third team and as voted on by you guys we're gonna be doing the Legion of Boom it is a perfect starting point when you guys see this roster if you guys are enjoying this series Leave me a comment in the comment section below. Smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and help me get the exposure on this series that I think it rightfully deserves in the state of matter right now on YouTube. I think this is the coolest shit going in my biased opinion. And if you also agree, just let me know in the comments because YouTube appreciates it and it pushes this video in the algorithm. But what I said about the terrific starting point for this squad is like this is like the beginning of the Legion of Boom. And the draft class that I imported, the draft class that's our first draft that we get to work with, is the draft class that Russell Wilson was a part of. And there's also the rule, if you will, that we can only make draft picks in rounds one and two. Russell Wilson was a third round draft pick. So if we want Russell Wilson in Seattle, it's gonna have to be down to the computer pulling the trigger. Because right now we got Tavares Jackson at quarterback. Uh, yeah, could do a lot better, right? See, we don't, we push by, we don't have, we have playbook Jesus, Charlie Whitehurst as well. We do not have our quarterback on the roster, far from it. Uh, we do have beast mode. Marshawn Lynch, 96 superstar X Factor. We could definitely probably give him a better ability. We just, obviously, with the uh, Cleveland Browns, ran it with Peyton Hillis, and you're gonna you're gonna probably want to put every ability that you had on Peyton Hillis on beast mode. Marshawn Lynch, one of my favorite players in NFL history, and he's 25. He's just going into his prime, which is awesome. Got Michael Robb there at fullback. Sidney Rice. Remember Sidney Rice at wide receiver? And he's not even the best guy. We got Golden Tate. Early Golden Tate going into year two of his career. 75 star. We have Doug Baldwin. 69. Hidden dev trait. So, like, there you go. Right there. There's There, there could be our wide receivers. Uh, tight end. Probably need to go out and get a tight end. Sooner or later, Zach Miller was solid. Russell Okun. We got 81. Robert Gallery. One of the you know more bigger busts. But, he, you know, he turned around. It was average. Uh, Max Unger on the O-line. He was a part of, I think, a lot of those Seattle Seahawks teams. 77 star. I think Okun has a dev as well. 81 star. And then on the right-hand side of the offensive line, probably need a right guard, but a right tackle. We have the rookie James Carpenter was their first-round pick of Alabama. 78 already with a star dev. On the defensive side, you got Chris Clements, a.k.a. when he was on the Philadelphia Eagles, choke slammed. I actually think Tavares Jackson. So that's kind of cool. I always remember that. He was solid. He was a service, you know, service for a rotational guy. You have Red Bryant, who was a great run defender. He's 84 with a star dev. You have in the middle, you have Andre Branch and Brandon Meebane, two very solid defensive tackles. I think Branch probably played his, I don't know if he played his best football with Seattle or New England, but Meebane was always very, very good. Uh, left side linebacker, we have the rookie KJ Wright, 74 with a star dev. Middle linebacker, David Hawthorne, 86. I think he's normal. He is 84 technically, but he has the boost. And then a right outside linebacker, Leroy Hill is the current starter. We also have Malcolm Smith, who went on, obviously, to become a Super Bowl MVP. We'll see maybe we, what we can develop right there. The secondary where it gets best. First up, we got Brandon Browner, 83 superstar at 27 years old. He was always kind of the old head in the Legion of Boom. You have Marcus Tufon, who was, you know, before the Legion of Boom, was probably their best corner, maybe one of their more prolific corners. Walter Thurmond. Oh, man. If someone remembers what his alias was when he was in Philadelphia, he had like a funny alias. I have to Google this right now. Literally, I'm leaving this in the video. Walter Thurmond alias Philadelphia. He had a hilarious name. Wasn't quite Rod Mexico. Oh, it was just for some reason he wanted to play and pick up baseball. His name was Dick Mahoney. That was, there's my Walter Thurmond story. Uh, but we got Richard Sherman, who I nerfed him. The base roster had him like an 80. But remember, Richard Sherman was like a converted wide receiver. And uh, this is about as low as I can get him without, you know, clipping the balls off him, if you will. So we have 71 normal. A lot of development needs to go in there for Richard Sherman. They have Byron Maxwell, who, while, again, relating to the Eagles, was not a good player. He was good in Seattle. So, like, th what a draft class, though. Byron Maxwell, Richard Sherman. You got K.J. Wright. Um, Doug Baldwin. You know, and the year before that, you got goal. Like, man, what? It, it almost makes you feel sad. How far the Seahawks have fallen off from drafting. Uh, free safety of Earl Thomas going into his second year. 85 superstar. I mean, he was a baller all, like, you know, since day one. And uh, really loves, you know, he's, you know, loves his brother. And then a strong safety. Another one of my favorite players, Cam Chancellor. I just, like, that. what a window. What a three-year window. Because obviously in real life, for the third draft class, they got Russell Wilson. But, like, that period is, like, one of the best three-year periods 
that I've ever seen from a team drafting. And hopefully we can do the same here. Now, the only bummer is, oh, Jesus, we don't even have a first round pick because we're just, you know, we're starting with the regular rosters. So we straight up don't even have a first. Why don't we have a first? Who do they trade for that first rounder? So we're, we're not, we know, we're going to be able to make a pick in the second round. But uh, the base roster that we're dealing with here in Seattle is amazing. I think this is going to be a very, very fun rebuild. So shout out to everyone on Twitter who voted for today's rebuild. Again, likes, comments, all that stuff for the algorithm. Let's get into year one. So look at our contracts year one. Clearly, Marshawn Lynch is going to be one of the big players in this rebuild. So I got him on a seven-year contract. Says we got Red Bryant as well. David Hawthorne kind of stuck his nose up at us. I'll probably come back with another offer there just because, obviously, you know, one player I really want to try to bring back is definitely Bobby Wagner. I do want to try to recreate the Legion of Boom. Michael Rod, anytime about fullbacks, you know, kind of tells you to frig off. You're like, all right, you're a fullback, buddy. Know your place. Uh, we got Brandon Browner re-signed. I'm going to let Leroy Hill hit free agency. Uh, we got Hauschka and McQuesten back at left guard. Uh, so we spent a lot of money here. But uh, unless David Hawthorne has, like, a massive year, which and it looks like he might go up to a star dev, I'm probably going to let him walk. So the end of year one, actually impressively enough, even with the Bears Jackson at quarterback, we win the NFC West with an eight and nine record, which is, uh, you know, don't see that all the time, but uh, life's, you know, life's pretty good starting out the rebuild with a divisional championship. Take a look at our team. Look at the big picture there. Marshawn Lynch really carried the load as the top running back in the NFL this season. Tavares Jackson, I mean, that's... It's not bad. That's like that's literally like serviceable, entry level serviceable quarterback. Forty three hundred yards, twenty five touchdowns, ten picks. So he's like AKA. He just kept the offense rolling. He's like yeah, you know stopgap game manager. And that's fine for Tavares Jackson until we can find our proper replacement. Ryan the ball though, beast mode crushed it. Almost eighteen hundred rushing yards, twenty one touchdowns. What an absolute monster. 1,005 for the rookie, Doug Baldwin. 1,003 for Sidney Rice. 8-6 and six for Miller. 8-2 and two there for Golden Tate. Marshawn Lynch had 400 yards, 7 touch. He might. I think we got MVP. We might have a year one a beast mode MVP on our hands. Defensively, Hawthorne led the team 132 tackles. We had 11.5 sacks. Red Bryant, 8 from Mebane. 6.5 Allen Branch. Uh, 3 picks, Brandon Brown. Man, Legion of Boom. Still in the infancy. Going to work on it a little bit. Uh, MVP, does it go to beast mode? Oh, loses out to the quarterback, Drew Brees. Damn. Uh, Marshawn Lynch is running back of the year, but he's already the X-Factor, so it's not like we can really be gaining any dev traits, anything special like that. So let's get into our first playoff matchup as a below 500 playoff team, taking on the 12-5 and Chicago Bears. Could be winnable, man. Our defense is very good. And we actually handle business 27 to 10. All right. I'll take a playoff victory. Not. Do we run it? We just ran it down the throat. Buck 27, a touchdown from Marshawn Lynch. Going to the next round to take on our very first retro rebuild team Megatron, Matt Stafford, the Detroit Lions. And we win again. Are we going to win the Super Bowl in year one? I don't even want to let, we'll just keep going. All right, we got Dallas. Okay, that's that's where it ends against Dallas. 21 Ted. I'll take that. Two and one in our first playoff run, going to the NFC Championship game. We still don't have a quarterback. I think things bode very well for this Seattle Seahawks team going forward. So we close out year one. No dev trades gained on the offense. Doug Baldwin, 75 star, Golden Tate, 80 star, and Beast Mode is still our X Factor. On the defensive side, though, we got X Factor on Richard Sherman. KJ Wright went from star up to a superstar. The Legion of Boom. It's we just need Bobby Wagner, man. For our first free agency period, I'm going to bring back, uh, you know, we got Laurent McClain. We need a fullback there. He was actually was a beast of a fullback for the Ravens. But, I, I, you know, we let Hawthorne leave. I don't want to be spending a lot of money on guys that aren't Legion of Boom guys. So why not bring back another great Seattle linebacker, Lofa Tatupu, on a one-year deal. One other player I was trying to get, He's kind of nerfed a little bit. Michael Bennett, who was a part of Seattle uh, for you know a lot of his prime. No dev traits. So I didn't really want to overpay, but I, I looked at it. And I was like, yeah, we'll just stick with Chris Clemens for the time being. Wow, Lofa Tatupa says, nah. -ah. So we don't have a first round pick, but maybe in that second round, we might have to grab best middle linebacker available. So we currently don't have a first round pick. I think it's to Jamal Adams trade. I want Bobby Wagner. I think I'm going to have to figure out a way to get Bobby Wagner. 
All right, we're able to trade into the first round. We had to send our starting D tackle, Alan Branch, our second round pick this year, and our first round pick next year. So we're still going to take whatever. Put this way, if we're going to reap the benefits of having multiple first round picks in our first rebuild that we have with the Detroit Lions, we also have to deal with the downside of some of these teams that just don't have first round picks, even though we're back in the day. So we did what we had to. They're able to get pick 11. Because what's, what's doing, hey, let's run it back with Seattle. You know what I'm saying? Let's run it back with the Seahawks and not have Bob Wagner. Not have, like, one of the faces of this outstanding defense. So I think even more so than, like, being like, oh, do we get uh, Russell Wilson or not? This is the Legion of Boom rebuild. You need one of the, the key pieces there. So we're able to trade up and welcome Bobby Weggs back to the Seattle Seahawks defense. And also, I guess, punishment of not having a first-round pick next year is that our computer just hooked us up with absolute garbage for the remainder of the draft class. Sometimes they draft us star depth players. We had Justin Simmons get drafted for us, this very talented safety in the uh, Browns rebuild. Got nothing here today, but at least we got Bobby Wagner. So, looking at our free agents here, Tavares Jackson's been solid, actually, but... Um you know, we gotta be we gotta be kind of conscientious with our salary because we're gonna have some massive contracts coming up. So I, I want to lock in Max Unger to a four year deal, and everyone else, you know, we gotta save our money. At the end of year two, AKA our Madden thirteen season, still pretty good, man. All considering the fact that we don't have a quarterback, ten and seven is not too bad. Uh, and last year we were the NFC West champions. We almost went to the Super Bowl. So I'm excited to see what kind of run we could go on. Marshawn Lynch was the second best running back. Look at Charlie Whiter's playbook. Jesus, our backup probably went to Tampa or something like that to have a season. Uh, let's see what we got here. Tavares Jackson, 4,100 yards, 29 touchdowns. Again, just solid. Well, still very much Marshawn Lynch's offense here. 1,800 yards, 21 touchdowns for him. 13 and 14 for Golden Tate on 108 receptions. 1,004 for Sidney Rice. Not bad on the defensive side. KJ Wright, 120 tackles. We had 10 sacks, me, Bain, and three picks. The rookie, Bobby Wagner, who, surprise, surprise, is a superstar X Factor. I mean, makes it well worth the first round pick that we gave up to ensure that we drafted him. Frank Gore is the MVP. Beat on Marshall Lynch. Back to back years. Beast Mode is the runner up for the MVP. Bobby Wagner is Defensive Rookie of the Year. Golden Tate, wide receiver either. Could have a chance for Golden Tate to get off star up to a superstar dev. That's kind of cool. But let's see if we can go here on a little bit of a playoff run. Bring our top four offense and defense that is littered with superstar and superstar X-Factor playmakers. And see if we can take out the 82 overall commanders. And we absolutely crush them. 38-10, to 10. man. This is... Uh, I mean, this is the rebuild you guys wanted to see. Three times. Oh, that's where Whiters was. Our two quarterbacks last year. Tavares Jackson gets the better. Beast mode had a huge game, 133 yards. Two touchdowns. And we punch our ticket to find out right away who truly is the best team in the NFC West as we take on the 49ers here that are very good. 88s across the board for them. I don't even know who they have. Um, well, we're about to see because they beat us 35-21. I couldn't even I couldn't even guess. We know they have Frank Gore. That's it. Alex Smith at quarterback. Frank Gore went off. A good, great battle between the MVP and the runner-up for MVP. But I, again, you can still just kind of tell, man, we are a quarterback away. And it's not like it's a strong quarterback class coming up. We have a second round pick. We don't even have a first round pick. And we're talking about like this is like the EJ Manuel, Geno Smith, Mike Glenn, like ugh. we need to uh, hope that there's a good free agency quarterback, or we're gonna have to probably wait another year. Until that 2014 draft class. So as we close out year two, Golden Tate goes from star up to a superstar dev at wide receiver, which is awesome. And on the defensive side of the ball, Marcus Smith goes from normal to star. Earl Thomas goes from superstar to superstar X Factor. Come on, man. We just, we need a quarterback. This is honestly disgusting. Who's available at quarterback, to be honest with you. Um... Let's go to the draft. Maybe Geno Smith? I don't know. Oh, man. Who's going to be around in the second round? I looked around the league. It's just we got to go after a quarterback here. Kirk Cousins is the backup to Josh Freeman. I wonder if we could. I don't even know if this is going to go through. Uh, Kirk Cousins, 72 star dev. Literally the only backup quarterback. Like it was him or Terrell Pryor. Terrell Pryor was like a 61. 
So I don't know if we can... There we go. We forego drafting this year. We don't have a first-round pick. We don't have a second-round pick. But we got Kirk Cousins, who was like the quarterback drafted after Russell Wilson. Let's go. I just straight up sim the draft. Don't know who we're getting. Our, first, our top pick is Kirk Cousins. Um... Let's see, man. It was kind of a weak draft class anyways. In the first round, we got Corey LeMonnier. But Micah Hyde this, uh, in the fourth ain't bad. I'll take that every day of the week. Hidden dev corner, Micah Hyde. 68. He could be superstar. Maybe just a star. But that's pretty good. Add him to Legion. Because, I mean, you know, for what it is worth, Brandon Browner is kind of out of speak. He is starting to regress. He was a little bit older than everyone else from the Legion of Boom. Here we got Ken John Barner, who's a terrific special teamer. But, uh, man, I'll be honest with you. Not the best drafting here by the Seattle Seahawks computer. You know, we're they're drafting like current-gen Seattle, not Legion of Boom Air Seattle, unfortunately. But at least next year, we get back to having first-round draft picks. So now after the trade for our quarterback, here's how our team looks like in our year three, a.k.a. Madden 14 season. Kirk Cousins, 73 star. Let's see what he can bring to the offense that now has a superstar, Golden Tate. That's really the only big change there. And on the defensive side, yeah, um, the front's a little light, to be honest with you. Uh, again, this is kind of the nature of, like, keeping our money because we know we want to just re-sign all these guys first and foremost. So we're not going to spend any free agency, and we haven't had any meaningful picks. So, um, I mean, we'll bump up Micah Hyde a little bit here on the depth chart. But other than that, man, let's, let's hope we can win without a pass rush. So there's mostly good news, a little bad news for free agency. The good news is the Legion of Boom is going to be together for a long time. We got Cam Chancer on a seven-year deal. We got Richard Sherman actually on a six-year deal. The bad news is that KJ Wright, who was a very important part, it's just because, you know, in Madden, I think for contracts, they generate outside linebackers. More so as edge rushers. KJ Wright's not an edge rusher. You know, that contract should be half that amount. So I, I can't pay $81 million for KJ Wright. But... We did get Doug Baldwin coming back. We are going to continue to develop Malcolm Smith on the outside. Hopefully he can step up. But that is the little bit of that bad news. But happy that we can get Sherman and Cam. And soon, hopefully, Earl Thomas locked down long term. Year 3, a.k.a. Madden 14. We finished 9-8, and eight, which is not bad. You know, I think I was maybe expecting a little bit better under Kirk Cousins. But it's still developmental era Kirk Cousins. He's not... You know, we're still working on, on making him into a legit quarterback. 4,400 yards, 24 touchdowns, 7 picks with the second-year player out of Michigan State. Uh, on the running attack, holy. 1,300 yards, 20. That might be the most rushing touchdowns I've seen so far in this game. 28 rushing touchdowns for Marshawn Lynch. Uh, 30 total on the year. 7-3 Sidney Rice, 8-4 Miller, 1,006 for Doug Baldwin, 1,006 for Golden Tate. Would love to try to keep those guys together as long as we can. On the defense side, Bobby Wagner, you know, it's just what he does at this point. A freak of nature. Uh, sacks, we definitely need pass rushing help. We knew that coming in. This was like, okay, we went without a pass rush. Uh, we have decent run defenders. Legion of Boom, six picks. Earl Thomas, five for Richard Sherman. Three for the rookie, Micah Hyde, who is super stood out. I'll tell you right now, behind the scenes, I was like, should I knock him down to star? I mean, the computer drafted him. I didn't pick him. But we've had so little in terms of draft picks. And when you look at, like, President Dave Michael Hyde, especially, like, the safety uh, for the Buffalo Bills, you know, Superstar's not ridiculous for him to have. He's one of the best safeties in the NFL. So I was like, you know what? We'll keep it Superstar. It's what the draft classes have provided me. We also got three picks, Cam Chancellor, three picks, Brandon Browner, two for Bobby Wagner. Literally everybody ate in our secondary this year. Uh, yearly awards, MVP went to, it could be Marshawn. Oh, my God. Top five for him, 28 touchdowns, doesn't get you MVP anymore. Very quick look here, we'll go through the uh, Seattle Seahawks. Mike High, Defensive Rookie of the Year. And that Earl Thomas is DB of the Year, beautiful. So let's see what we can do here for this playoff run. We've made the playoffs every year of the rebuild so far, which again, you know, we didn't pick the Seattle Seahawks because it was, you know, like the Detroit Lions or the Cleveland Browns, like rebuilding a team that was terrible at this time. Um... Everyone just kind of wants to see and like relive the Legion of Boom and see like what, how different we could kind of go. Uh, you know, the same but different, you know what I'm saying? And we get our first playoff victory here this season, 35-28 over the Minnesota Vikings. A pretty good game there from Kirk Cousins, managed the game well. Marshawn Lynch had uh, a pretty stellar performance. Speaking of, like, didn't Seattle make like a huge trade for Percy Harvin at some point around this time frame, I feel like? Uh, Earl Thomas had two interceptions. Again, like, this is one of those things, even with Kirk Cousins developing, 
This is a team that's going to go as far as our defense. As far as the Legion of Boom is going to take us. Next up, we have the 14-3 and Atlanta Falcons led by Michael Turner and Matt Ryan. And we get the job done. 45-28. to And there, I mean, that was the matchup too during this era. It was the, it was the Niners, Harbaugh and the Niners. Seattle Legion of Boom. Uh, big time performance there. Matt Ryan, I mean, just too many turnovers, man. That's a lot of yards, but the turnovers is all that matters for us. Lawrence Sean Lynch, 137 yards, four rushing touchdowns on the defense side. Bobby Wagner had an interception. Cam Chancellor with an interception. And we are, again, much like in year one, in the NFC Championship game, this time against our divisional rival, Frank Gore, Patrick Willis, and the San Francisco 49ers. They're very good, too, 90 overall. I like the Niners are the team that beat us to kind of like end our playoff run last year. But the Super Bowl on the line for the 9-8 and eight Seahawks. I don't know. Oh, we get the job done. 35-21. Is Kirk Cousins going to win the Super Bowl in his first year as a starter? That'd be kind of cool. Look at the stats here. Oh, my God. It's the defense. Five interceptions. Wasn't a good game at all. We run the ball. We play defense, 117 yards, three rushing touchdowns for Marshawn Lynch. And on the back end, we got two picks for Bobby Wagner, Sherman, and Earl Thomas, and Micah Hyde. Five interceptions, punches our ticket to the Super Bowl. Take on the, the other Cinderella, the Dolphins, the sixth seed with, what do they got going on? Just looking really quickly. They got Donovan McNabb at quarterback, Reggie Bush, Anthony Fasano, Brian Hartline, Devon Best, Brandon Marshall, defensively. They got David Hawthorne, who we let walk. You know, Vontae Davis is pretty good. But I think for the most part, man, we are going to be, on paper anyways, the favorites. I mean, I don't because that's where, where's Donovan McNabb at this point in his career. He's probably, you know, the twilight of his career. I don't think we're going to be, you know, expecting, especially against our defense. Donovan McNabb going four or five touchdowns. But you never know. Sometimes things get weird when you uh, when you go through and play the moments, which is what we're going to do. We're going to get a front row take. would love to win the Super Bowl. This would be the earliest Super Bowl. I mean, we're only three teams in to this retro rebuild, but this would be the earliest rebuild that we have won. I'm trying to build Kirk Cousins in the style of quarterback that he is. I would assume out of all the archetype, you would assume, speaking to, you know, Commanders fans and current Viking fans, Kirk Cousins probably is in, like, the, the field general tier, maybe improviser to a certain extent. Like, hi, we've got two points there. Uh, we're just going to keep spending it into slot. I want all these guys. To, it's important for me to make them the perfect scheme fit for the Legion of Boom. Kind of makes it all together, the cohesion that you want to see from that unit. But it is now time to sit front row and see if in year three of this 10-year rebuild, we can win a Super Bowl with the Legion of Boom. All right, let's do it. One thing, I, I want to restart it, but I, I, I tried to always put the retro jerseys on. I'm working on uh, getting someone to make me a mod. Now, the jerseys are always like that era. So if we do actually get the Super Bowl victory, look on field. My apologies for not having accurate representation of the Seahawks here. But look at this domination, man. The Dolphins can't even get across midfield. 13-0, 20 to nothing. It's starting to look like that Broncos. Never mind. I'm not even going to say anything. I'm not going to bring it up because Miami kind of is on a hot streak there. To end the first half, and it does look like Kirk Cousins. Maybe the moment's a little too big for him, but a turnover is forced. We have to settle for a field goal. We're just not getting the touchdowns. I feel like Pete Carroll is just anti-hand the ball to Marshawn Lynch. He had 28 rushing touchdowns this year. But it is looking pretty good, fellas. Year 3 of 10. We get to try to relive the dynasty. The Super Bowl is going to the Seattle Seahawks. Over, I mean, just a... It's just, let's be honest, it's kind of a weird Dolphins team. All things considered. Love you, Dolphins. That's going to be a fun one. A team that hasn't been particularly good over the last 10 years when we get to do the Dolphins... But the people want to see Legion of Boom. We couldn't give them Russell Wilson. But we could give them Kirk Cousins. The quarterback, they did not know they wanted. I, you know, again, I still... I mean, you probably have to just commit to Kirk Cousins at this point. We might have an opportunity to draft quarterbacks, especially over the next couple seasons. But, you know, Kirk Cousins got us a Super Bowl's first year start. He's our Super Bowl. Look at that. You saw it firsthand. That is Sim Kirk Cousins gave us 330 yards, four touchdowns, no picks, and is a Super Bowl MVP. He might make the thumbnail right now. Right now, on top of my head, I'm thinking you got Earl Thomas, Cam Chancellor, Bobby Wagner, Richard Sherman, all those guys could make the thumbnail. We might have to squeeze Kirk Cousins, Marshawn Lynch. We might have to put all Kirk Cousins on there. That's what you love to see, though, man. Legion of Boom. This team's not going anywhere. We got all these guys outside of, you know, sadly, KJ Wright, because he's getting classified as an edge rusher. All these guys are going to be back. 
for, I would say we're going to have at least a good two, three year period after this that we should be able to hopefully run up a couple Super Bowl victories. But what a performance from Kirk Cousins. Things I never thought I would utter in this rebuild. So as we go to free agents here, we do need a lot of things that we aren't going to be able to address with just our only two picks that we get to make during the drafts. So I'm going to look at Jason Worlds, who at one point was like a super high pass rushing prospect of the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm going to try to land him and convert him to a defensive end. Just, yeah, we'll see what he got. And nice, able to end Jason Worlds. So we get an opportunity, maybe a little bit of a career revival. So finally, we get two draft picks. So looking at where we need to get better. Guard, we need literally two guards. We could look at tight end. On the offensive side of the ball, on the defensive side of the ball, even though we got worlds, you know, we need a D tackle, left outside linebacker, D tackle, left outside linebacker, two guards, and a tight end. So there's one clear selection here. Looking at the tight end, not much there. Looking at the guards that are available, Xavier Suofilo, eh, you know what I'm saying? But looking at the defensive side, we need a uh, defensive tackle. A little bit better, Rashid Hagman. You know, he was actually kind of head coach of Minnesota, but we also need an outside linebacker. And the top outside linebacker available right now is Kyle Van Noy. And that kind of seems like the strongest selection we get. Where it's a top fit for our team. This would be like if he was an actual player, the guy we most likely would be picking anyways. So let's go Kyle Van Noy with the hidden dev. Then we're just going to go with the best available guard, which is Spencer Long out of Nebraska. Ugh. It's a top fit for our team. Hopefully he's pulling like high 60s. And looking at a draft recap, not bad. I mean, Kyle Van Noy, low rating, but he has the hidden dev, which is good. No problem throwing him to the Wolves. Pass coverage as well. Uh, Spencer Long, 69. Take that. We got Maurice Alexander, who I actually feel like he played for the Seahawks. Could be wrong there. Uh, Huff, 64. Roosevelt Knicks at fullback, 68. I know he spent time with the Steelers. Cody Booth, no idea who he is, but he's a 68 tackle in the sixth round, which is good value. And then Brock Coyle, linebacker, 66. So the computer got some pretty high overall players. But the lone hidden dev there in Van Noy, which, I mean, he should develop very nicely for us. Here's how our Seattle Seahawks are going to look as they try to defend their Super Bowl title here in year four, a.k.a. Madden 15. Kirk Cousins, 76. Hopefully, they continue his development. We got Marshawn Lynch, Golden Tate, Doug Baldwin. O-line is strong in spots. A little bit weak on at the guard spot, but that's fine. From the defense, Legion Boom in full form. Earl Thomas, X-Factor. Sherman, X-Factor. Brandon Brown, he's, he is starting to regress here a little bit, so I am kind of happy Micah Hyde is here, and we kept the superstar that he was, you know, we drafted him as. Camp Chancellor, monster. Would love for him to hit X-Factor sooner and later. We have Smith, Wagner, Van Noy. Hopefully he develops nicely. Very interested to see what his dev trait's going to be. Most likely star. Could be superstar. Uh, Jason Worlds. Going to be interested to see if that kind of pans out for us bringing him and giving him another opportunity to see if he can become a legitimate pass rusher. So let's go defend this Super Bowl title here in Madden 15, a.k.a. Year 4. I don't want to show the record right now because I hopefully we can turn around. It may or may not be 1-6 at the midway point, but we're able to re-sign Earl Thomas, Russell Okun, Red Bryant. I actually went to a two-year deal. I didn't like the fact that it was three years at 30, and we got Golden Tate locked up for four more years. No idea, man. Won the Super Bowl next year. 5-12, and 12, last place in the... We're going to have a good first-round pick, I suppose. But, like, I don't... I mean, even last year, we had a lot of turnovers with the defense, but our defense was still pretty bad. And that's horrific for the Legion of Boob. 31st overall defense. I'm... I, I don't know, man. I might have to change the playbook and go with, like, someone from the Legion of Boom era. Uh, bad year from Kirk Cousins. 23 touchdowns, 19 picks. Uh, huge year from Sean Lynch, baby. 1,300 yards, 23 touchdowns. 11-9 Golden Tate, 1,003 for Doug Baldwin. On the defensive side, Bobby Wagner, bunch of tackles. Pass rush is still not the best. Uh, interceptions are up, which, are, I mean, well, up. Interceptions are good for where they should be, but, man, what a bummer of a year. Arian Foster is the MVP. Just quickly burning through here. Marshawn Lynch is running back of the year, our lone award winner. But, uh, I mean, a lot more questions than answers right now. Our Kirk Cousins, who said, like, you know what? He wants the Super Bowl. Let's go with him. That was a shit year. So, looking at our team as we close out the year. No offensive upgrades. But, honestly, in the defense, maybe surprisingly, a Van Noy, star dev, not bad. But Jason Worlds goes up dev trade. 82 star. All right. So, I mean, we go into the offseason. We could definitely look at a defensive tackle. We could definitely look at corner if it's BPA because Brandon Browner is starting to slow down there a little bit. 
Or, you know, offensively, we go back. We look at guard, we can look at tight end, or maybe, depending on who's left, quarterback. Free agency has been pretty ass, to be honest with you. Uh, if, I'll tell you right now, if, if we didn't do a Lions rebuild, I'd actually be pretty interested in, in looking at Matt Stafford here. Uh, ben Roethlisberger is also available at quarterback, but I, I don't really want to go that avenue in this rebuild. So because we sucked, we got the we we'll go from being Super Bowl champions to having the number three overall pick. At the positions of need, we can look at Danny Sheldon. He should be solid. We can look at guard where you have Lakin Tomlinson, legitimate first rounder. You have left guard Mitch Morse. But actually probably has a dev trade. You look at tight end, not not so much there. Maybe we could go tight end in the second round if Clive Walford's still there. But uh, quarterback. I was kind of hoping we could go Mariota. Mariota just went. Is it too early? What's next year? We have Wentz and Goff next season. I, I just think if you if you view it as an off year, Kirk Cousins wants us to... I, I think we're going to give Kirk Cousins another year. As much as Jameis Winston, that could be fun. I, I feel like we, we definitely have to give... Um, we definitely have to give Kirk another year. So I will say this. Because we have pick three, uh, we should we should probably go with the best of the D tackles. We have three four first-round defensive tackles. You know, we, we could look at Leonard Williams, too. I, honestly... Honestly, if we needed a defensive tackle at three, which is clearly a position, I would see Leonard Williams at 6'5", 300 pounds, and be like, he could be our defensive tackle. So that is who we're going to pull the trigger on here in the first round, and we're going to move into D-tackle. Whereas rating will probably drop down a little bit, but, you know, good player. Kind of need a guard right now. I'm not going to go with the, you know, because we kind of worked in Leonard Williams at three, I'm not going to go Alan Pett because, you know, Alan Pett's probably going to be superstar. So we are going to go, and we actually technically need a left guard. So go with the top left guard, which is Jeremiah Putasi, who I only know about him because it seems like he's been in the XFL every year. And to sit about the rest of the draft, computer did not hook us up anyway, Shaper. We got guys who don't even have pictures, for God's sakes. Rodney Gunter, Honus Grasu. So Leonard Williams is the bell of the ball of the draft class, 72 uh, with a hidden dev. All right, for our contracts, literally I looked at world stats and it took away the two contracts that we already uh, offered and extended for James Carpenter at tackle. And we're bringing back Brandon Browner on a one-year deal. We have the Canadian, John Rod. I actually might need to throw him a one-year just because patriotism and whatever. Uh, Jason World's not having a good year this year. So I, I, I feel like, you know, we can we could hit on another pass rusher. I think Sidney Rice has been solid, but I think we can, you know, again, we got to save money here a little bit. you got to be conscientious of that. I want to see what Kirk Cousins is. Our record's pretty good. I think we're 6-3 and three right now. Kirk Cousins is at... He won us the Super Bowl. I feel like he won us the Super Bowl, and if we give him this contract, it's only three years. We still... It's not like we're committing this whole rebuild to Kirk Cousins. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, hopefully he continues to develop. Hopefully he can lead us to another Super Bowl. But worst case scenario, we can still cut ties after three years. And run it back and finish this rebuild out with a different quarterback if Kirk Cousins doesn't continue to develop and progress. A lot better result here for the Seattle Seahawks as we close out year number five, aka Madden 16. We win our second NFC West title of this rebuild going 11 and 6. So last year was just really weird. Take a look at the stats here. Very interested to see what Kirk Cousins did. Oof, it's kind of like, you know, it's a Tavares Jackson like stat line. Uh, Marshawn Lynch continues just to age well. 1,600 yards, 21 touchdowns. We've been blessed with the running backs these last two reels. Going Peyton Hills to Marshawn Lynch. Feels pretty good. 94 catches, 1,300 yards, 8 touchdowns. Golden Tate, 11-5 and five for Doug Baldwin. Happy with that. Defensively, Bobby Wagner, 159 tackles, 13 TFLs. Two sacks, three picks. Eight sacks for Jason Worlds. Red Bryant, who we moved to D-tackle. 22 TFLs, six and a half sacks. Leonard Williams, who we kept at defensive end. Because actually, he's a scheme fit. As a power rusher, he is superstar dev, uh, and not not a terrible year to start for for him. Interceptions down. I would like to see a little bit more production from the Legion of Boom, all things considered. But you know we have the number one offense in the NFL. Happy with that. MVP goes to Andrew Luck, who is on the Buffalo Bills. Marshawn Lynch coming in at number three. He's offensive player of the year though, so that's nice seeing Marshawn get recognized, and he's running back of the year for the rest of the awards. Unfortunately, no. Seattle Seahawks, but at least Marshawn was an absolute beast. And we need a ride on the back of Marshawn Lynch and we expect on going through the gauntlet here. Green Bay is one of the more difficult teams to sim against in the NFC. And year one, we get through them. 
20 to 14 now in the division round against the eagles where we actually are a stronger team and this plays true to real life philly always struggles against seattle and they get it by one point 25 24 the eagles go on and meet they know i see detroit now because they, they were the first team we did in the retro rebels i like seeing them go far they got mike vick that was a big game our defense legion of boom did not hang up very nicely against michael vick one and one. At least we made the playoffs. At least it wasn't five and twelve like it was last season, and we feel a little bit confident with Kirk Cousins and his ability for at least the next three years that we got him on that contract extension to, to lead this team to the playoffs and get us a couple more divisional titles and maybe a Super Bowl. Looking at our squad in terms of dev trades, nothing on offense, but on the defensive side, Malcolm Smith goes up to superstar, which is great because we already locked him down on a five-year contract, so that is only going to age well. And as we talked about earlier, Leonard Williams is a superstar that is exactly what you want to see from the third overall pick and also shout out to the eagles winning the super bowl this year for free agent you gotta spend a little bit of money you gotta try and be competitive we're gonna look at tj lang on the offensive line he's 89 star so we're coming in with a pretty big bid but the eagles and bears also have legitimate offers same goes to d tackle two looking at nick fairley who he saw and he was actually pretty solid for us very consistent alongside adama can in the lions rebuild so I'm going to try to get him on a two-year deal till he's 30. Going to look at Jermaine Cunningham on a one-year kind of rental to take over for Jason Worlds at defensive end. He was really good at the University of Florida. And then Dustin Hopkins at kicker. So that if we can get all these guys, that means we're going to be going to the draft where wide receiver and most importantly tight end are our biggest positions of need. And we literally got the two lower end free agents. Brutal. So because we missed it on the guard, I suppose you could throw guard in the mix, but tight end, wide receiver, guard, D-tackle are the spots that we want to kind of look at. Not much on the defensive side of the ball, but on the offensive side of the ball, in terms of guards, Joe Tooney, even though it's a slight reach, is the second, third round. You know he's going to be a good player. We could look at Cody Whitehair, again, slight reach, but you know he's going to be a good player. Ryan Kelly, even if we would just want to take the only first round projected interior lineman, should be a pretty good player. However, tight end... Not the best. You know, if we can go into the second round and grab an Austin Hooper or a Higby, one of those two, that'd actually be pretty dope. But we need wide receiver help, man. We need that third wide receiver. Look who the top guy. Every time we've gotten this swing, we've got Sterling Shepard in our first rebuild, I think. We got Tyler Boyd in that second rebuild. Why not? Every year, it feels like in this draft, we need a wide receiver. It is time. Michael Thomas, welcome to Seattle. And we're just laughing. We're gonna, actually, I don't know who would be better of the two tight ends in terms of rating, but we'll go Austin Hooper, who at least like during this draft was like almost consensus tight end one. No dev trait, but he, I think he should be pulling close to a 70 in the overalls. So look at our draft recap. Obviously, Michael Thomas is going to be a very good player. 73 star dev out the gate. 68 for Austin Hooper, and the computer got a 71 normal dev, Eric Murray, Josh Perry, 74 guard, Ted Karras, 74 normal. Cool, I'll take that. DJ White and Kevon Frazier finish out the draft, but obviously, Bell of the Ball, the star of the show, Michael Thomas, pairing him with Golden Tate and Doug Baldwin. A lot of weapons for Kirk Cousins, for him to succeed. So for year six, AK Madden 17, here's a look at our squad. Offensively remains essentially the same, but we got Karras, who was a value pick for us. He won the job at right guard. Austin Hooper at tight end, and obviously in the slot, the slot got himself Michael Thomas as our big prized rookie from the draft class. Cunningham, we signed on a one-year deal at defensive end. Still need that D-tackle too for sure, but uh, Legion of Boom, you know, still got Brandon Browner, Micah Hyde trying to force his way in. Would love to see Cam Chancellor get X-Factor and or 99 club this season, but this team's absolutely stacked. Fully expect another playoff run. Expensive free agency period, but you know, in terms of in-house, as good as you could ask for. We got Bobby Wagner on a six-year deal, bring back Red Bryant on a one. Max Unger on a two. Micah Hyde, I actually went full five years. I think he's only scratching the surface. And we're going to keep Brandon Brown around for one year just to keep the gang together. And I feel like that's actually a bargain for Jermaine Cunningham. He'll be 28, 29. Shouldn't regress too bad. Still a start of. And we had him re-signed for under $4 million. Year six, Madden 17. Look at that record. Look How? Why? We've never been this good and just randomly got the roll of dice. We're 14 3, the one seed. First round by. Look at the numbers. Look at the rankings. Yes, Kirk Cousins is probably the only guy that kind of sucks there. The number one defense, number three offense. We have like no leaders. I, I, I actually kind of want to see the stats and how everything kind of broke it out here a little bit. 4,300 yards, 30 touchdowns for Kirk Cousins. We have 
a lot of rushing numbers there for sure. Golden Tate led the team. 70, uh, 1,100 yards, six touchdowns, nine and eight for Michael Thomas, nine and five for Doug Baldwin. Defensively, Bobby Wags, 107 tackles, nine and a half sacks, Red Bryan, eight and a half, Leonard Williams. Four picks, Cam Chancer, three Micah Hyde, three Bobby Wagner, three Malcolm Smith. No, I'm, just, I'm not really seeing how this team was this unstoppable, all things considered. Um, but we were very good. So it's the best team in the NFL, first round. Take on the Niners. Feels like we've met the Niners three times in the playoffs. Three out of the five times we've gone to... Kidding me? One and done. Best team, finally put it all together. And we're one and freaking done to Dak Prescott and the 49ers. Very frustrating. So we were the best team, but we were one and done the playoffs. The good news, the only good news, Michael Thomas is superstar. On the defensive side, Kyle Van Noy up to a superstar dev. That's all we got. And we went into free agency again, kind of like, what do we got instead of Kirk Cousins? Brutal. I mean, no disrespect. Love Michael Fick. Brutal. Brutal. So out of the draft, looking at where we need to get better. Um, I mean, we could still maybe get a, a tight end with a dev trait. And on the defensive side, really just really just need D-tackle. Let's just go in line. I'm going to take the best D-tackle available. We need a D-tackle. TJ Watt just went off the board. We're picking 28th. I have no idea what D-tackles look like in this draft. Malik McDowell, who actually was a Seattle Seahawks, looks like we're going to try that again. A, a what if, you know? And how is Larry Okajobi a UDFA talent? He's probably the best D-tackle available alongside maybe Dalvin Thomas. I thought like Thomas went a little bit higher than that. And again, these draft classes aren't 100% accurate. He looks good, man. Let's run it back. Malik McDowell, what if he wasn't, I don't even know what his issue was. Didn't he like get in like an ATV accident or something crazy like that? Either way, running it back with a guy that was a bust for Seattle. Ooh, say it ain't. It's not George Kittle, but I think it might be better than Austin Hooper. We're going to take another swing at tight end, and we're going to try to get John. Oh, there's no dev. God damn it. So we sip the draft out from that point. The computer actually hooked us up. Third round, we got Derek Rivers, 72. Uh, McDowell, 72 hidden dev. Johnny Smith, 70 normal. We got Carl Lawson in the fourth round. There's a nice little pass rush. He actually, actually, we actually might need, you know, long-term, we have Cunningham, Barnum back just on another one year. He could be our long-term pass rushing answer. Pose Leonard Williams. So finally, it's been six drafts, and the computer has got us hot garbage. We got Jamal Williams here. Actually, that's not a bad pick. Uh, as well, 69 Sam Tevi, you get Al Quiddin, Muhammad, but I'll take that, I'll take Carl Lawson, Malik McDowell, and Jonu Smith, light free agency, kind of changing, like, our team is fucking terrible this season, we're two and six, and I'm not, I'm not, two and five, sorry, and I'm not paying anybody, I'm pissed off about it, honestly, the bipolarness of this team continues, as in year seven, we go seven and ten, third place, we were 14 and three last year, only got better, Except uh, we didn't, you know? Uh, take a very quick look at the stats so we can just quickly burn into the offseason. Uh, yeah, I don't think, you know. Well, this way, I'm kind of glad we only got Kirk Cousins, I think, for one more year. I, I think it's time to move on at the quarterback spot. See if we can get a guy that can elevate this team. Not so much just the, you know, a game manager. Big year, Marshawn Lynch, 14 and 16. We had 12 and 8, Doug Baldwin, 9 and 7, Michael Thomas. Again, just, you know, passing offense can only do so much. Defensively, big year Bobby Wagner. We had nine half sacks, Jermaine Cunningham. Eight from the rookie Malik McDowell. Four picks, Earl Thomas. Just across the board, though, not, not a super hot year. Aaron Rodgers is the MVP. Marshawn Lynch coming in at number four. That's about all we had going for us here this season. Let's gear up for the offseason and get into year eight. All right, maybe we'll be able to get a big-time free agency signing this offseason. We're going after one of the big fishes, David DeCrastro. At right guard, 93, superstar. Let's make it happen. Why do big free agency targets don't want to come here? How come you saw with them but not me? So go to the draft. Couple needs here on the team. We're looking at tight end again, again. We're looking at offensive guard after missing on a DeCastro. We're looking at D tackle. Could be a spot. And I mean, looking right away, we do have Mike Gusecki as an option at tight end. I wonder if he has a dev. Mark Andrews is also there, but we would go in order for the sake of this. Uh, also at guard, we have James Daniels out of Iowa. 
He's probably pretty good. But I, I feel like we need more weapons. So we're going to grab Mike Gisecki, tight end. Why can't we get depth traits on these fuckers? All right, so now we're down to D-tackle and or guard. Top D-tackle is not looking hot. I mean, we could go Mohurst. Or at guard, we have Alex Kappa. Might be a dev there, but I think you're a little bit more inclined. Wyatt Teller. Is this like Wyatt Teller after he blew up with the Browns, Wyatt Teller? Uh, no, nah, we'll grab him. We'll grab him. Yes, let's go. So look at that, we got Mike Gusecki, 70, normal dev, Wyatt Teller, 72, hidden dev. Rest of the draft was uh, a little bit of a mixed bag, but Traquan Smith, 69. We got Bosco, Boston Scott in the seventh round. That's a nice little tandem. And at least we got one guy with a dev trade here in Wyatt Teller, who's gonna be a day one starter at guard. Year eight, AKA Madden 19. Here's where the team is at. Unable to get a quarterback in the draft. We're still sticking with Kirk Cousins. Beast mode starting to regress just a little bit, but he's still an absolute animal. Tate, Baldwin, and Thomas at wide out. We're adding Wyatt Teller, who's star dev on the offensive line. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's just, it's a stellar offense. Kirk Cousins should be playing better. Let's be completely honest. And then defensively, weren't able to get that second D tackle, but literally everywhere else is, is strong. Outside of D tackle two and corner three, uh, this team here, I would be shocked if there's a better defense in the NFL. All right, so looking at our contracts here, uh, pretty easy. I want beast mode. You know, we got three years left, so let's get Marshawn Lynch if he'll be here for the whole rebuild. Same with Golden Tate, Doug Baldwin. We got Kyle Van Noy in a three-year deal. We got Max Unger on a one-year. Uh, Malcolm Smith, I'll, I'll offer him that deal. I can't do it till week nine, and if he takes it, fine. If he wants more money, we'll probably let him walk. And then, obviously, Kirk Cousins is the toughest call out of all the players. There's no rush to sign him now. Let's see Let's see where Kirk Cousins is at come season's end and if he's worth $80 million. All right, the uh, up and down of the Seattle Seahawks retro rebuild continues. As we go 11-6 and six this year, runners up in the division, but we make the playoffs. Well, Marshawn was still pretty good. Second running back. We also... Uh, Earl Thomas, five interceptions up there on the interception leader chart. Kirk Cousins, 4,400 yards, 30 touchdowns. So it's like we've had the same stat line. Like, has Kirk Cousins ever had, like, a baller year? Outside of the fact that he won us a Super Bowl. He's, he's been the same kind of guy. Um, and, like, wasn't the last draft... Like, that means before we picked top whatever, 15, in the last draft. Like, Lamar was gone. Even Josh Rosen was gone. Like, all the quarterbacks were off the board. Um, man. All right, let's look at the rest of the team. I'm just... Uh, Marshawn, 1,700 yards, 15 touchdowns, really good. 1,300 yards, 7 touchdowns, Golden Tate, 9 and 8, Doug Baldwin. You know, obviously, it's just that's where you, that's where the quarterback drops off, especially for Michael Thomas having that kind of year in the slot. Defensively, 117 tackles for Bobby Wagner. Sacks are still definitely lacking. Leonard Williams has been slightly underwhelming for sure. Five picture, Old Thomas looks good. Three, four, Cam Chancellor, two for Micah Hyde. But, um, yeah, definitely, definitely not getting... The kind of production, I think it ultimately comes down to the quarterback spot. Aaron Rodgers is the MVP. Quickly. Oh, that's cool. Aaron Donald on the Eagles. But yeah, I mean, like, look. Like, Lamar Jackson was gone before we picked. Sam Darnold was gone before we picked. And we got stuck with the tight end, you know? Marshawn Lynch is running back of the year. Wow. Shoelace. Denard Robinson, wide receiver. Of the year. That's kind of cool to see. Earl Thomas is DB of the year, so we had a couple good couple good seasons for uh, one offensive and one defensive player. Now we go to the playoffs, taking on the 8-9 and nine New Orleans Saints. We are four points better in terms of overall, so I'm sure that means we're going to lose, which we do, 38-28 to 28 here in Madden 19. The Legion of Boom comes. I mean, we only got a couple years left. I mean, luckily there's only a couple years left of the rebuild. But there's only a couple years left of this Legion of Boom guys being in their prime. And we are kind of wasting it right now with uh, late season Kirk Cousins. And I, I told you right now, we are not going to be the Minnesota Vikings. We are not going to pay Kirk Cousins ridiculous amount of money for him to be a bang-on average quarterback. We need someone that can elevate it. I mean, I don't know what we're going to pick. We're going to be picking in the low 20s, so we're not getting Kyler Murray. I mean, what is going on? Why is... I... I Imagine, imagine, 
if we do this rebuild, right? There's there's Legion of Boom, and we end up somehow, some way, with Drew Locke still as the quarterback of the Seahawks. You can't escape it, Seahawks fans. It's happening. No. It's almost automatic at this point. When we let like a kind of good free agent go, they're the best guy at that position, hoping to get an upgrade. But there actually is a different direction we can go. And that is Mariota. He's, he's not the same overall, but he has a super shy dev trait. Uh, we are going to we're going to get him. Okay, we have a hundred million dollars plus in terms of salary cap going to free agent. Let's try and throw our weight around. It's not like we haven't even been tried the last couple of years. Just we can't get big free agents to come to Seattle. But we're gonna try and hopefully change it this year. Looking at Gronk at tight end. We're gonna try to reunite Dixon with the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, Maluga at outside linebacker. We're gonna move into that right outside linebacker spot to take up for uh, Marcus. Uh, why do I forget his name? But uh, you know who it is. The guy that won the Super Bowl MVP. Uh, then I'm looking at Marcus Mariota at quarterback. You know, oh my God. We went from Seattle Seahawks potentially having to draft Drew Locke and living with that reality. Now we're like kind of seeing like what Atlanta Falcon fans this upcoming year have to try to get behind. And that is being excited about Marcus Mariota being your quarterback. But at least in this scenario, he's only 25. He's a superstar. I think it might work. All right. Well, we got everyone except Gronk. And I think, honestly, at the end of the day, we need it. Mariota was the single most important free agent we could get. Gronk was just trying to take this offense over the top. So ahead of the draft, looking at where we need to get better. Uh, you know, again, we could... No disrespect to Austin Hooper, but we could try to maybe get a tight end. Um, pass rush. Our pass rush has been lacking in D-tackle. Maybe third corner. Pass rush, I would say right now, is the biggest one because we're just not getting sacks. And then I would say D-tackle, maybe corner. So let's see what we got available. What do we have at pass rush? We have, oh, well, first rounder there. Oh, why the fuck? Why is Josh Allen should be in the first round? I should be able just to pick him. Uh, Chase Vinovich as like a fringe first rounder, less than ideal. D tackle, absolute nothing on the board. Uh, Anthony Nelson. Oh, ooh, ooh, hoo -hoo -hoo. all right. I think we found our uh, pass rush. Brian Burns, let's go. Easy pick. Big fan, too. I was a huge Brian Burns stand when he was coming out of Florida State, too. And with our second pick, I'm going to try again. Swing again at tight end. Dawson Knox, absolute monster for the Buffalo Bills. We're still searching for a tight end with a dev trade. And that hunt continues. All right, so look at the draft recap. Man, there's something going on with this draft class. I think it happened in the last rebuild where we just got someone outrageous, like, in the mid-round. So I will uh, do, unfortunately, the wrong thing. And I'm going to have to do the right thing. And release that Oliver. Uh, I mean, we got uh, Marcus Epps starting safety for the Eagles this year. That looks great. Dawson Knox sucks. 64. But at least Brian Burns is an absolute beast. Oh, man, we need to de-tackle too. But that's just, that's too cheesy getting Ed Oliver in the fourth. That's clearly just like a draft bug. Year nine for our team. And uh, let's see, man. It is Marcus Mariota's turn to try and give us some good play here at the quarterback position. Great play, even. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what to expect. But what I was able to do, though, with the selection of Brian Burns is it solved our D-tackle problem because then I could just as easily kick Leonard Williams into D-tackle where, you know, in a in a 4-3, he's absolutely going to be a defensive tackle. So, uh, you know, maybe, you know, I'm not going to say that I thought about this when I made the selection of Brian Burns, but maybe good karma for doing the good thing and releasing, obviously, the glitch that Oliver pick. He's like, well, it actually worked out for us in the end on our defensive line. Year 9, let's go, Marietta Show. So last night, I ended with our Mariota team. That actually crashed. It actually crashed, but luckily enough, because we had a crash in our Browns rebuild, I've, I've been like hard saving it on the side. I wasn't going off the auto save. A hard save. And I was like, I got it to work. And I saved it last night at a starting point. I was like, I'm going to wake up tomorrow. Things are going to be great. And it's crashed. And I've had people, the top scientists in this Madden community, take a look at this with their hacking programs. And they said these files are gone. Um, and I was going to scrap. I, I was thinking about scrapping the whole thing with the fact that we did win a Super Bowl with the Seahawks. I, I think we'll just still put it up as is. But I mean, trust me, man. There's going to be no one more frustrated at this point. We still had two freaking years left with Seattle. We only got eight seasons. There's something going on, though, man. This is the exact same crashing season that we had in the last Browns rebuild. The last Browns rebuild in our Madden 20 year, a.k.a. year eight. It crashed. I couldn't save it. The files were corrupt. In this Seahawks rebuild, Madden 20, year 8, it crashed. 
it corrupt. And people don't think it's the draft classes. They think it's just something that happens, a bug that's been an issue in the last couple of bands, yada, yada, yada. And I'm, uh, it's like, of course, as soon as I'm having a great time recording Madden, having fun with something a little bit different, it breaks all the time. And not only this, break, I wish it would just break early. It takes me like, you know, if I want to keep getting to Madden 20 season year eight, just to try to like troubleshoot it. Still takes hours to get there. Um, so unfortunately, it's gonna have to be a little bit of the wet fart ending, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try literally everything possible. No rock, not, uh, you know, unturned to try and figure out how we can get this to work. Uh, you know, I, I threw out an idea. Maybe there's gonna be a way because I've, I've I've never you know I usually don't go beyond five years for my rebuild. So I'm like, well, if five years is still good, maybe we do five years, like we do five years with Seattle, and then I'd get something that could like rip that franchise save roster out, and then I'd use that, I'd load that roster up, and then I'd do another five years on top of that. So it's still only five year franchise saves, but I'm using 10 years worth of a roster. I, again, I don't know if that's possible. I'm gonna try and see, man, because I really want this to work. I'm so frustrated. And I, you know, I, I just feel like there was too much accomplished, too much good to just completely scrap this video. But uh, I, I can't keep, you know, finishing half ass videos here. Um, and I, you know, I'll be, if I didn't win the Super Bowl with this, I would have just scrapped it and would have had like, what, three days worth of work just throw down the drain. So if anyone out there is a modder and they think they might have an idea on how to fix this or a solution or an alternative or a workaround so that I can get 10 seasons in for these rebuilds by all means reach out reach out to me on twitter reach out in the comments hit me up on discord uh but uh, unfortunately yes back to back rebuilds good rebuilds fun rebuilds man i want to see what marcus mariota can freaking do and uh file the files are corrupt but at least we won the super bowl the browns rebuild got corrupt but we won a super bowl before that happened and here in Seattle, we won the Super Bowl before it got corrupt. So at least, you know, we achieved something. It can go down as a successful rebuild. But uh, there may be a slight pause while I try to figure out a little bit of a workaround or some solutions for this. But if you do have an answer, if you are a man with some answers, if you are a leading scientist, feel free to reach out to me. But uh, that'll do it for me today, guys. Again, I, I, I gl I'm happy that so many of you guys are digging this series. I want everything to work. I'm so... Ah, oh, so, mm, so fucking mad right now. But uh, I appreciate all the love and support. I'm going to try my best to figure this out, to get it working. Uh, in the meantime, might do, might get retro pink slips or, or something like that going. Because I, I just need to keep on keeping on here. But uh, I'll, I'll be in touch. I'll let you guys know what's going on. But thank you guys very much for love and support on the series uh, and the channel lately. It's, it's been infectious that everyone's kind of been digging it a little bit. If it is your first time stopping by, I'm going to get this right. So don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment for the algorithm. Uh, maybe just comment at this point. Fix Madden 23. That'd be great. Get like a thousand comments of that. That'd be cool. And I'll see you guys back for the next one. Uh, peace out. Fuck.